spread everywhere by the body of Osiris. Now, this is better than any daytime soapbox. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. So, there are certain recurrent motifs in this myth, in this drama. It reveals, I believe, the divine nature of man even prior to birth. The voice proclaiming that the, must the, uh, the Lord of creation has incarnated in the world. The, quote, word made flesh, unquote. Um, an interesting thing about melanin that I mentioned before in this connection is, again, melanin absorbs light. As the fetus is developing, it is attracting to it as it becomes more complex. Various forms and manifestations of complex experiments with light. Before the first, melanin orients itself toward light. Before the first heartbeat, melanin has begun to organize your central nervous system. In other words, the template of your life and your consciousness is manifested in light and is happening before the first heartbeat, before you're born. So you are literally a, a form or expression of light prior to your birth. It is also the fusion, this myth, I believe, of science and religion in, the collective, in a collective legend. It is the motif of the embodiment of an immortal soul in a mortal body. It's also the story of family unconscious dynamics of love, loyalty, longing, family romance, sibling rivalry, deceit, betrayal, sexual politics, death, grief, and resurrection and return to the divine estate through transformation and eventually translation. The dynamics of light and intelligence, that is to say, the falling into the dark tomb of matter then by passion, love, and death, reawakening to the prior light of pure spirit and intelligence is played out on the canvas of the collective mind here. And that collective mind issues from an African intuition of the moral process. The sexual power dynamics of Oedipus and Electra are unfolded here in the family romance, the family drama. Marital issues of marital fidelity. The dynamics of Job, especially around silt and guilt, a sin, guilt, loyalty and belief and redemption eventually again. The myth of Midas, I see greed for power and remorse eventually are played out here. The flight of Icarus, and it's say ego inflation, flight and then eventual failure are played out here. The heroism that you find in King Arthur, Beowulf are presented here. Horu is actually the origin, perhaps the origin of the word hero. Another expelling, spelling or expression of Horu's name is hero, H-E-R-U. Horus is really the luminous solar hero who slays the dragon of darkness. And for those of you who are students of world mythology, you know that myth, that story keeps coming up again of a hero, uh, whoever he or she is, with a sword of light usually, going out and slaying the dragon, one form or another. Horu is the personification of light, while Set becomes Satan, the lord and personification of darkness. Now, what you should be very clear about this. Blackness is not darkness. Yes. Okay? Darkness. darkness is the inability to recognize light, and darkness is inability to move. Sloth is ignorance. Egyptians did not equate blackness and darkness. That's a, that's a, that's a, not, other peoples have done that. The Egyptians and the Africans have not done that. In fact, the all-black underworld for the Egyptians was a black creative flux out of which manifested various phenomena. The, at the top of the Egyptian uh, pyramid was the black capstone. So Osiris is the expression, I believe, of a soul's apprehension of the cosmic, energetic, psycho-spiritual world process. Now, what does that mean, essentially? It means that I believe in that the cosmos is a divine milieu of luminosity, energy, and intelligence. From it, from time to time, the divine principle descends or incarnates in matter, this more dense manifestation in the phenomenal realms. However, this dense matter of body and mental life holds within it a secret life 
and a fragment of the living eternal light. It never quite dies. <laughs> when this matter itself falls or dies, the body falls or dies, falls apart, the hidden life and light reawakens or is re-erected, i.e. resurrection. Osir this is the Osarian drama. This is also, doesn't take much imagination to see, but this is also the mythos of modern science concerning what the hell matter is. Matter is trapped light. Matter is literally gravitationally enfolded light. All of this is a manifestation of light. All that you see is a manifestation of light. It's only the tiniest part of light that actually comes to your visual field. The rest of it is unseen. Over 90% of the matter in the universe uh, is unaccounted for. I just don't know where it is. And it's referred to as dark matter. <laughs> yeah. 95% of the gravitational mass in the universe is unaccounted for. They just don't know where it is. But they can, they can measure its effects. So the universe is really literally composed of whatever this mysterious dark matter is. And in embryogenesis, our own internal uh, evolutionary development in the womb and outside of it, is largely, not completely, not completely, but greatly and significantly influenced by the unfoldment of this intelligent dark process. So really, the light, the visible light that we see is a tiny fragment of reality that most of the light is unseen. Now, this prehension or apprehension of the world process, I believe, is at the root of the three dominant Western religions of today, of the common era. It is outlined in the Book of Any, and each spiritual tradition will emphasize, as it has a right to do, whichever aspect of it is most akin to the needs of the peoples of the time or that particular group of people. In the uh, Christian tradition, in the Book of Any, the areas that are most incorporated and emphasized are the notions of the immortal soul, final judgment, heaven, hell, atonement, and salvation. In Islamic tradition, it emphasizes more the immortal soul and salvation by surrender to the divine law. In Judaism, it's traditional Judaism, an emphasis on the law and atonement. In some of the more mystical elements of Judaism, particularly the Kabbalist, Kabbalistic uh, tradition of Judaism that sprung up in full flower in medieval Spain, but actually has its roots earlier, you find the notion of the scattered eternal light lost in each person that's reawakened, expressed um, uh, for the uh, Kabbalistic uh, uh, Jews. Uh, every person has a fragment of the divine lost within them. And um, uh, salvation or um, redemption is the bringing together the scattered lights of God back into the body of God. This is the primary mythos behind that notion. Uh, this vision of the divine process sprung up in most of its flower after the Jews were persecuted by the Christians um, and were expelled from Spain, although it had its ferment during the time of that. And in fact, much of it was developed, I believe, during the 700 years, or the latter part of the 700 years, to, through, in which time in Spain the Jews were actually protected by the Moors. That isn't mentioned enough in history, but for 700 years, uh, the Jews were protected by the black and uh, Arabic, but primarily black Moors of Spain. Prior to that, they had been persecuted by the uh, Romans uh, in the latter part. And then, of course, as soon as the, uh, Rome, the, uh, the Moors are kicked out of Spain, who catches it? But the Jews. 1492 was a heavy year. Um, in the earlier part of that uh, year, um, there is the Spanish Inquisition. Uh, 1492 also marks the time when Columbus uh, discovers himself in the Caribbean. <laughs> 1492 is also uh, the year that the last African emperor dies. 
was a heavy 